In this super advanced masking presentation brought to you by the Russell Brown Show, I'm going to challenge Adobe Photoshop CS5 and its new masking capabilities on this ultimate photograph of Dr. Brown. This is a really difficult masking project. I want to drop out the background behind Dr. Brown to reveal this second image you see here of this circus tent. Now, of course, this is a great image that I found on the iStockPhoto.com library. And I'm going to use this image in combination with Dr. Brown to blend the two together using advanced techniques here inside of Photoshop CS5. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to start right over here with the quick selection tool. Then, of course, you go down into your work area. After selecting the appropriate layer, click and drag and start to make your selection. Now, just to speed things up a bit, I have already created this selection and I have it waiting for me over here in the Channels tabbed panel. I'm going to go ahead and load that with the Command key on the Macintosh or the Control key on the PC, hover over my Quick Selection mask, click on it, and it loads it in. Now, I'd like to analyze what I'm doing here and how I made this selection so that it works best with these new tools inside of Photoshop CS5. To begin with, I'm going to select the letter Q on my keyboard so I can display the quick mask. Check this out. Here's a tip and technique. If you double click on the quick mask right over here, you can change the opacity of the color that's used to opaque out the background. And in this case, it makes it a little bit clearer for me to see what I'm doing. Now you know. Click that OK. So check it out. I have a nice selection around the hands and jacket. It is as sharp of a selection that I can make using the quick selection tool. But also notice up here in the hair. I've made a selection around the hair here, but I did not select those areas of transition. What does that mean? I didn't select those areas where it becomes transparent to the background, where I can see the background through the hair. So I've left those out, and here's my theory to success select less to achieve more. Do not select too much of the hair because using these new tools I can get better results if I select less up to that point of transition and then let the processing work for me. Okay, let's get going. This is a great mask for a project like this. Let's select the Q key back to our selection. Let's go back to our Layers tab panel and make sure I have my layer targeted. Next, right down here to the Masks panel. Of course, I have this convenient little icon right here that I can click on, but you can also go to the Window menu and down to Masks in order to bring it up on your machine. Okay, let's get going. Our story begins right here, of course, by clicking on this button to add a pixel mask to our background as you can see here. Now my first step in this two-step process I'm going to show you is to tighten up and refine the edge of the mask around the jacket and the hands. I find that with the quick select tool I get a very rough mask. Let's check this out. I'm going to select mask edge right here to refine this edge. Then I'm going to zoom in here on the hand right here. As you can see, there's a bit of a rough edge, and that's the type of edge that you pick up when using the Quick Select tool, especially on a noisy image like this, a very complex masking project. We can solve this problem quickly and easily, and we don't have to use the Pen tool, for example, to refine this edge. So in this first step, I'm going to go in and I'm going to make adjustments to the edge right here. I'm not worried about the hair. I'm just worried about the hands. First step, I'm going to feather my mask just like this. And in fact, I'm going to select the letter K on my keyboard so I can see the mask right here. Notice that feathering starts to get rid of some of this rough edge and smooths it out. Combine the feathering with a bit of contrast and then you can start to bring in the sharpness back into the edges again. Do you see that? And it's the combination of the feathering and contrast together that helps me round off the errors in this initial selection. It's a really great 
capability. I'm selecting the L key, of course, and the L key takes me down here, of course, to the Layers view right here. Clicking away so I can see this again, and now I refine the Shift Edge right here. I can start to shift the edge back in, check it out. I'm cleaning up that edge really nicely. I didn't have to go in with a pen tool. I'm simply feathering the edge, adjusting the contrast and the shift to get really, really nice results as you see here. Great, that is phase one to this project. I'm gonna click OK and I have a nice mask. Now let's concern ourselves with the hair. Let's zoom back out a bit so we can see more of the hair as you see here. Now our second pass to a really great mask. Let's click on Mask Edge again. This time, focusing on the hair, let's go in and let's try the Edge Detection Smart Radius and let's just see if it's going to help us in this project. Clicking on Smart Radius, running my Radius Expansion over to the right, Let's see what happens. Looks pretty good on the hair. It might be an excellent possibility, but it's also giving me some problems with my hands here. So it's extending the radius around the hands. Not quite what I was looking for, so I'm not going to use the smart radius on a project like this. I'm going to go into manual override and paint in the edges of transition. And that's the key. We're painting in edges of transition. We're not really creating the mask. We're extending the areas of transition. So let's do that. With this tool selected, moving in, I can see the size of my brush. I'm going to use my close bracket on my keyboard to increase the size of my brush, as you see here. There's a plus sign inside the brush right now. If I hold down the Option or Alt key, I see a minus sign. This is the key to success. Plus means we're adding to the areas of transition and the Option or Alt key subtracts from the areas of transition. And that's what this next step is all about. It's about going back and forth with this tool to extend this area of transition or to reduce this area of transition. Notice up here in the options bar, you also have this eraser tool for reducing the areas of transition, but I prefer just having the one tool and using the Option or Alt key to switch back and forth. Okay, 